Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, we will set up the Pokemon details section, which is actually a container around that whole thing here, so around all these Pokemon details. In uh, this video, we will focus on the name, this type section, so that will be its own composable. Then this section here will be called Pokemon detail data section, I think, and this will also be in a composable, so the weight and this height. Um, this will be called a Pokemon a detail data item. And then in the, in the next video, which will be the last video of this playlist, we will set up these base stats here and also animate these. So let's start to go into our compose code and implement this whole container around everything, which will be called the Pokemon uh, detail section. So on our Pokemon detail screen here, we have a composable. And Canary is <laughs> again so slow, which will be called Pokemon Detail Section. And all this will take is on the one hand the Pokemon Info, which is of type Pokemon, and on the other hand, just a modifier. We set it to the default modifier. So the way this will work is we will just have. A column here so in this column we will put this text this type section uh, this um, data section and this stat section so let's create that um, and for this column we will set the horizontal alignment to center horizontally so we just center the content and we want to set a modifier to uh, actually to our Modify we passed here a dot fill max size and we also want to offset it by 100 dp here and we want to set um, actually just the vertical offset and we want to call vertical scroll so in case we have a smaller device here then we want to be able to scroll um, so the content doesn't get cut off here and for that scroll we need to pass a scroll state which we can get with val scroll state is equal to remember scroll state so with that scroll state we could just potentially modify the scroll position for example so we simply pass that here so the first thing in this column will be our text that describes the Pokemon name. So the text will be hashtag, and then we will enter the number of that Pokemon, so PokemonInfo.id it is actually, followed by a space, and then followed by the Pokemon name. So PokemonInfo.name, and we want to capitalize that using locale root so it always starts with a capital letter we want to set the font weight to bold the text align to center and I'll set the color to material theme that colors that on surface and then below that here we will have our type section our data section and the stat section which we don't have yet, so let's create these. On the one hand, that will be a composable Pokemon type section, which will take a list of types. So Pokemon can potentially have two types or just one. This will be of type type. Um, is it called like that? Uh, is there a type here from our response package this type. We want to import that. Okay, and this type section will essentially just consist of a row because you can see this Pokemon just have a, has a single type uh, which is fire, but if we take a look at a Pokemon that has multiple types you can see these are basically just arranged in a row. So we have a row here with vertical alignment set to center vertically so we just center that and we set a modifier to modifier dot padding we want to apply padding of 16 dp 
And that is actually it for this modifier. And now for each type in this types list, which can be um, a maximum of two types, we want to have a box. We'll set the content alignment of that box to center. And we want to set the modifier to modifier dot weight. We set the weight to 1F. So in case we have two types, that just means that both types fill up the, uh, the same amount of space here in our row. If we have one type, then it will just fill up the whole space. I want to set the horizontal padding to 8 dp. So we just have a little bit more space horizontally. I want to clip it to a circle shape, so we have rounded corners. And now for the background, I will actually paste a function here that will just take a type and parse it to the right color, because I really don't need to show that here in video. So what I will do is I will just go to our util package and paste this Pokemon parse class. You can see just a bunch of when expressions um, that will... I need to import the type here from our remote package um, and I'll just rename this package name here actually to our Pokemon, uh, Jetpack Compose Pokedex which is just my package name here and then uh, the errors are gone this one is not needed so basically what this file will do are these functions this function will just take a type and it will return the corresponding color which is just hard coded here because we of course decide which type has which color um, uh, then we have parse stat to color, which will take a stat and parse it to the right color, which is not rele relevant for this video. And also to parse the stat to the abbreviated stat. So this is what we get from the API. But here we actually want to have the abbreviated version of that. That is what this function will do. But for now, we only need this parse type to color function. So we go back and set the background. And by the way, you can of course get this from my uh, GitHub repository in this video's description. But well, I think you know that at this point of this course. We want to set the background to parse type to color. And here we pass our type. And I'll set the height of that to 35 dp. And all what's inside of this box is just a single text. So, text, set the text to type.type.name, dot dot capitalize and pass locale root again. The color will always be color white and the font size will be 18 sp. And that is it for this Pokemon type section. Next up, we have our Pokemon detail data section. Now let's actually first create these data items because we want to put these into this data section. So this will be in data item and this as well. So let's create that down here. Composable Pokemon detail data item. And this will take the data value of tab float. It will take the data unit of tab string. It will take the data icon, which is of type painter, and the modifier, which we set to the default modifier. So here in our app, this 55 would be the data value, then this kilograms would be the data unit, and this, uh, th this weight symbol here is actually our data icon. Here we will use a column for which we'll set the horizontal alignment to center horizontally and the vertical arrangement to center. So we just center the content inside of that column. And we set the modifier to the modifier we passed here. And then we will just use an icon. The painter will be our data icon, content description null. 
And the tint will be material theme dot colors on surface. Then we want to have a little space of 8 dp, so modifier height 8 dp, and then we have the text that describes this data item. So the text will be our data value followed by our data unit. And then we set the color of this text also to material theme colors on surface. And then with that we can create our detail section here in which you first want to calculate the corresponding um, weight units and the height units because from the API we get pretty weird units. I think for the weight um, we get it in um, I don't even remember, but for the for the height we get it in decimeters, which we don't want to use here. So we want to um, convert it to kilograms and meters. So we first have a val Pokemon weight in kilograms is equal to remember. Here we use round, and we of course need references to that Pokemon weight and height. So Pokemon weight of type integer, Pokemon height of type integer, and we also want to be able to pass a section height for this whole section. DP amounts and set to 80 DP by default. So in here, for the weight in kilograms, we say Pokemon weight times 100 divided by thousand actually. So that is how we can convert that and also automatically round it to I think one decimal place we have here. Yeah, you can see we have one decimal place and with this round function divided by a thousand here in this case, we can round it to kilograms and one decimal place. And we also use remember here because we don't want to make that calculation on every recomposition here. We can copy this, call it Pokemon height in meters and replace this with Pokemon height. But then we will have a row here. So this will just be this row here that arranges this item, this little line and this item. We will take a modifier, modifier dot fill max width. And in here we put in a Pokemon detail data item. The data value will be um, the Pokemon weight in kilograms here. The unit will be kilograms and the icon, let's actually put that into separate lines. The icon will be of type painter resource where we can just pass a drawable ID. So other drawable IC um, I see weight. We need to import R. Didn't I call it like that? Oh, here, here's our I see weight. Okay, I figured it out. Um, for some reason, it didn't recognize my R import here. So I had to add this line here to really make sure we refer to our own resources and not the compose default resources. So if you also encounter this error, then just import R from whatever your package name is. And then go here and write R the drawable I see wait, there it now is. And we also want to attach a modifier. Modifier dot wait and set it to 1F. So both of our data items take up the same space. Then we'll also add a little spacer, which is that separator, that little line. We set it to modifier um, dot size, set the width to just 1dp and the height to our section height. And then give it a background of color dot light 
gray. So this spacer will just, as I said, represent this little separator line here that has a width of 1 dp and a height of our whole section height. Then we can copy this, paste it here for the second data item, which is for the Pokemon height in meters. We place the unit with an M, the icon with IC height, and the modifier will stay the same. And that is it for our composables. Let's also add these now to our Pokemon details section here below that text. First of all, we have the Pokemon types section and the types will be Pokemon info dot types. Then we have a Pokemon detail data section. The weight will be Pokemon info dot weight and Pokemon info dot height. And here we will then put in the Pokemon stats in the next video. Now we need to take this Pokemon detail section and put it here into our resource.success. So when we get a successful response for the Pokemon info, we want to show our Pokemon detail section. So Pokemon detail section the Pokemon info will be Pokemon info dot data as so this is not equal to null and we apply modifier dot offset we want to move that a little bit um, up basically so we set the y offset equal to minus 20 dp so you have to make the minus 20 in parentheses. And we should actually make sure that we choose the modifier from up there that we pass from our other composable. But apart from that, it should be it. Um, let's try that out and launch the app. Let's see, click on a Pokemon and yes, that looks pretty good. The name is actually a little bit small. Um, I don't know why I didn't change that, but the rest looks pretty good. If we have a single type, it looks also fine. Uh, let's take a look here at our detail section for our text. I didn't increase the font size. Let's do that. Font size, or is it text size? I think it is just font size. Um, let's set it to 30 SP. We launch the app and then it should look pretty good. Let's see. Let's take this one. And yes, now it looks pretty good if you ask me for each and every Pokemon. Yeah. So that is almost done now. Only the stats are missing. And of course, you can also extend that app pretty easily because you still get a lot of data here for a response. As you can see, we have so many data classes that belong to an individual Pokemon's info. So you can just make use of that and even display more data for each Pokemon. Thank you for watching this far and I wish you an awesome day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.